today we will discuss about the search interface in Splunk. So the search interface is an interface where uh, it allows you to run some search queries on your index data and then it will uh, also allow you to generate statistics and then you can see your data in different visualizations as well. So if you if you install uh, Splunk Enterprise, if you see by default one app will be installed that is called search and reporting. So if you click on search and reporting, the search interface will come up like this. So search interface you can uh, think of think about like uh, Oracle SQL plus prompt. Uh, who, those who comes from uh, database background they will know that one so there you can run your queries and then get the query result and see it similarly here as well there will be a prompt like this and you will be entering your search here the search language splunk supports is spl it's called search processing language so splunk has their own uh, search processing language mm. Okay, so let us let us discuss about different uh, options available here. So by default, th th this this window comes up. If you see here, now this is the search prompt where you can enter your search. This is the time picker. Now Splunk time picker is very much important because uh, as I discussed earlier, each and every event in Splunk has their associated time that basically depicts when the event occurred so so splunk provides a powerful time picker uh, through which you can filter your event data according to your need so now if you click on here uh, there will be a lot of presets like last 15 minutes 60 minutes 4 hours also real time searches as well except that you can have your own relative times like 24 hours ago 6 months ago days ago weeks ago those those configurations then you can do your real-time searches as well from here you can give any date range you can give date and time range and if you know the epoch format you can give that as well like like this format as well also you can give so this is this is a very uh, well built time picker and now this is the one where you will be clicking it to run your search so before I run any search, let us see what are the other stuffs available here. So in the left hand side here, two links you will find. There is a documentation link which will take you to the Splunk documentation site. And there is a tutorial link as well which will also get, take you to the Splunk site where you will, you will uh, get a lot of good tutorials on Splunk. On the right hand side, it will give you a summary view of the data you have. So currently I have just indexed a single file which has nine events with just like ticket number and creation date and reserve date with nine nine dummy ticket numbers and also it, it gives me earliest event and latest event for the data when it occurs and if you click on data summary it will give you another view based on the host that means the server on which the data you have indexed source what file you have indexed or where from where the data is coming and source type what kind of data it is whether it's csv file xml file or, or it is coming from a script those those kind of view you will get it from here and there is another thing called search history so if you click on here it will give you the different searches you have already ran to this particular server you can filter it as well either by today last seven days last 30 days like that okay now let us run a search here so i have indexed my data into the main index so i will write index equals to main i'll select all time from here so either you can enter it to run the search or you can click on here to run your search both are same so now if you see here when I ran my search by default it, it has given me this view so let us discuss one by one so on this side 
uh, you have these job options where you can see uh, if I click on this job you will see how much time it the job took and how many event it's process with each and every details this window is um, uh, important because when you you will do your query tuning this is basically the explain plan of how the query ran um, and different properties as well has oh, like when, when you are running the query splunk internally converts the query into your into their own so you will able to see how the um, query has been reformatted by splunk and and, and during runtime so this is very much important when you will do the performance tuning of the query after that there is an option to uh, pause and stop the job as well if it is long running job you want to stop it you can do that from here share then print you can take a, take a print out of this whole query result as well i will go to login and okay, let me again search again and just again close the window uh, all time okay so let us continue we can export your data as well from here in csv xml and json format okay there is a mode there is a there are three mode here one is search smart mode fast mode and verbados mode i'll explain those modes when uh, i'll explain the other stuff here but by default the smart mode splunk chosen okay below that there are there is a menu it has created so by default it it clicks on these events so it will show you what are the different event mm, currently they are in your index there are patterns statistics and visualizations i will discuss that one as well so after that there is a bar if you see so this bar shows uh, when your event occurs basically if you if i hover mouse here it says me there are three events occurred during january 15 2018 so this this thing splunk automatically um, uh, determines based on the underscore time field value of your event so if you see now for january i have these three fields for february 2 march 2 april 2 so similarly for two events during february two events during March and two events during April. So this is how Splunk uh, determines this particular bar. This is this is very useful to know and there is a zoom, zoom in and zoom out option as well, which you can leverage. Okay. Mm. Now let's come to this, uh, this section over here. Over here, this is the main section where it, it will show you your different events. Uh, now, if you see here in my CSV file, I have events. So I have events like this. So it is basically indexed as it is. As it is. So this is my main event details, except that it also uh, creates a, some by default field, which I will discuss after some time. So if you see here, if I click on this arrow here, here so it it, it, it it gives me the de details of the event basically so it is very useful for longer events to see more details about it now if you see the left hand side splunk created two different sections one is selected fields and another is interesting fields now selected fields splunk by default creates three different three different fields one is host source and source type Host means the server from which the data is coming. Source means the data. The, here my source is the sample underscore data CSV file I have used to index the data. It could be any kind of file or it could be a modular input or scripted input as well which I will discuss eventually in my um, following videos. And source type is what kind of file it is like it's a CSV file, it's XML, JSON or it's coming from some scripts. So by default for any indexing or any events these three fields will be created now this field splunk creates when it's when you run the search now here this mode comes into picture so if i say fast mode okay splunk does not create any fields if you see here 
the number of fields previously it was created gone because splunk does not uh, from from it's when you run the search splunk basically what it do from your data it generates the key value pair based on that it creates different different interesting fields here in fast mode it does not do that so to do that you need to go to smart mode so then during search time splunk creates those filters fields sorry so now if you see here in my csv file i had only three fields resolve date created date three uh, ticket number apart from that splunk also created lot of other mm -hmm. fields because splunk knows how to make a key value pair out of those fields like date hour date m day date month so this this date related fields is derived from the underscore underscore time field here index it basically gives you the index on of the, the data you are already in, uh, on which the or in which the, the data um, you have indexed now apart from those extra fields there is a field called font this is very much important field because this gives you an overview of um, your data structure how your data structure basically so I'll, I'll tell you how this this particular field uh, has been generated so i'll copy this one in a notepad okay now i'll i'll just copy a single event here so now if i delete all the data except the punctu punctuation mark and replace the space with underscore you will see i will get the similar format so this is just zero remove give the space so underscore 2018 remove remove 15 4 keep that one remove this one so if you see here when i remove all the data except the punctuation mark i am getting the similar uh, similar punctuation uh, format so this field is very much important when you want to see the similar events in your in your data mm, currently all my data have similar structure so that's why the, there is only one punctuation mark but in actual production scenario there could be lot of punctuation mark based on that you can identify what kinds of events are similar and do your analysis on top of that now to make a field uh, from interesting field to make it as a listed in selected fields there is a if you just click on that field and click on selected equals to yes that will be listed under selected fields now whenever you click on any any of the fields it gives you this view where it it, it gives in a report like you can generate top values top values by time rare values even with these fields and it also gives you the top five values here okay based on the uh, based on that particular field occurs in the event now now sometimes what happens that in actual production scenario you you expect one field but that does field does not show up in the interesting field even though splunk is extracting that field that happens because if you go to all fields over here by default the coverage of these fields is one percent or more okay sometimes what happened that those those what we mean what we mean by coverage first let us discuss that if this particular field is appearing in all the events that coverage will be hundred percent so based on that the coverage has been set up okay so it may happen that for any particular field it, it's occurring in less than one percent so those fields by default will not show up in the interesting field so in that case what you need to do you need to select all fields from here then it will show up in the interesting field okay so if you see there is another option called extract new field if we click on that now this interface is used to extract new fields what do you mean by extract new fields means those fields which are not by default or automatically extracted by splunk 
you have still have option to um, uh, to create field out of this out of your raw data as well so i'll create a separate video for this particular feature of splunk because this requires a lot of explanation okay so let's go back so this is how a overall um, search interface looks like now there is another mode left which is called barbaros mode okay i'll explain that one as well um, so verbose mode is impor important when you run some statistic levels i will say stats count it's a simple stats count so it give me nine nine events here nine give me events but i if i want to see which nine events it belongs to if i i need to click on events but it will say as you are running some statistics generating some statistics you need to go to verbose mode to see the events so in that case verbose mode is important now if you see click on event you will able to see the verbose mode okay now now the visualization tab is important to visualize your data so i have generated now single statistic so in this case i can select different visualization by default comes with splunk in this case i will select the single value here but you can select any kind of visualization based on the statistics you are generating and then there will be a lot of options to format that visualization as well okay and there is a trellis as well which you can basically split your visualization okay so i'll create a separate video for uh, a trellis charts now once you have in run your search generate the visualization there is option to save as as well either you can save as a report or dashboard panel so if i click on this one dashboard panel and give let's say demo dashboard and click on save it's basically creates a new dashboard uh, in your search app if you see here the same thing is showing up over here and the dashboard you will able to see the existing dashboard in this search app dashboard click on that go there and the demo dashboard will show up over here okay so you can run now, now another search let's say index equals to me and then i'll say table ticket number I'll, I'll just give this three my three columns in my csv file okay i will run it i'll run it for all time okay then i'll add this to the same dashboard i'll click on save as dashboard panel now in in this time I will not select dashboard new. I will select the existing dashboard. I will select demo here. Panel title, table. Let's see. Okay. Then save it. Then if you view the dashboard, the already single value I have added is already be present over there. Except that it added another panel over here with this same table. So this is how you can generate dashboard as well from your search. Same. Okay. From your search uh, prompt. So this is how the whole uh, search prompt looks like and this is how it helps you to generate dashboards, run some searches on your data and generate visualizations as well. See you in the next video.